Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... Big bucks are not hard to come by. Ask these hunters who have one thing in common. No, we're not talking about big smiles on their faces. All these hunters learn the secret of how to grow big antlers. A product that requires no planning. A product that's easy to use and is guaranteed to grow bucks antlers to their full potential. It all starts here with the brand Lucky Buck. Guaranteed to grow bigger bone or your money back. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We've got a brand new show for you, lots of good stuff, and we're gonna kick it off out of the port of Saugatuck. We recently did some fishing down there with a local conservation officer, local sporting goods shop, a local charter boat captain, and a group that's aimed at getting physically challenged folks into the outdoors. You won't wanna miss that story. We're also gonna do a little pan fishing on this week's show, learn a little bit more about the wetland reserve program, and then kind of wrap up this week's show with you, the viewer, with a bragging board segment. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan Out of Doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by greenstone farm credit services making recreational land ownership possible across michigan and northeast wisconsin begin your land financing journey at one of greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com by meyer a destination for hunting fishing and camping from bug spray and tents to gps and gas meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there meyer by G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. A couple of turkey seasons back, I had the honor of hunting with Shannon Cortman. Shannon was able to down a very nice bird, and when I found out that he was going salmon fishing with some buddies, well, I jumped at the chance to spend some time with him on the water. Today was pretty special. We had a local charter boat captain, a local sporting goods shop, a local ministry aimed at getting folks outdoors, all working together to make the day for a couple of folks with some challenging life situations. Shannon, have you been out fishing before? I have actually. I was out uh, with Mark and uh, Aaron last summer. Yeah. Uh, out on the big lake here doing some salmon fishing. Okay. And then Dan and I were out uh, earlier this past year doing some more salmon fishing with a uh, another uh, group like Fulfilling Life. It's called uh, Pursuing a Dream. Oh, okay. And they kind of have the same uh, mission, uh, outreach kind of stuff, uh, getting people in wheelchairs out and doing that kind of stuff. Good, so. Yeah. So you're practically pro at reeling in these big fish. You, you could say that. Yeah. You could say <laughs> I wouldn't, but you yeah. could. You could say that. <laughs> Well, what's the plan, Captain? Well, we're going to set in about 110, looking at the wind, probably uh, roll north for, probably up to the slides and turn around and head south and keep going south. Okay. They got a tournament going on in Holland this week, this weekend coming up, so there should be a lot of boats pretty fishing. Okay. So as soon as you hit that, we'll swing around and go the other way. We had a full boat. Our other anglers today were Alex Mushar and his dad Mike, who happens to be the local conservation officer. Alex has Down syndrome, and we were hoping to get him his first salmon today. And we were dropping the lines in when the first rod went off, which is always a good sign. What do you think, young fella? So far, so good. <laughs> Well, 
want to talk about a fun day on the water, it was pretty cool to see all the smiles. Dan Wamick has been involved in trips like this now for quite a few years. Well, I'm with Fulfilling Life Ministries, and we're a ministry out of, out of Holland, and we, uh, we do this for special needs folks. And so we uh, set this fishing trip up along with Aaron from Lakeshore Outfitters and Tony, the owner of the boat. And uh, so we want to do more of this, and we enjoy doing this, and, and it's all about getting these kids out. And uh, yeah, that's how I kind of got started with it, and uh, working with Fulfilling Life Ministry for a number of years. And uh, we try to not only work uh, physically with these kids, but also spiritually. That's an important part of it. So no, it, it's, it's just been a good time, and we've enjoyed it, and uh, we've been doing it for a number of years, and hope to do it a number more years. Just the look on their face when they catch a fish, kill a turkey, shoot a deer, whatever they're doing out there. And, and you know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of trophies that you come home with that you don't hang on the wall. And uh, that's important, it's just that these folks get out and, and uh, people are aware of what we can do and they can do as well. So, and uh, with a little help from friends, this can all happen. What do you think, buddy? Let's go! Well, yeah, seeing somebody catch their first big fish is always a lot of fun. Alex was shaking, he was so excited. I asked his dad, Mike, just how they got to be a part of today's trip. Well, um, I'm a conservation officer, as you know, and I know Aaron through the uh, sports shop that he has, Lakeshore Outfitters, and he knew about my son Alex, who had a Down syndrome, and he asked us to come out and fish. Alex has never been salmon fishing before, and he loves fishing, so he invited us out, and here we are. And how, how was the day from your estimation? It was awesome. What do you think? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, we had a great time. Sometimes I think being a conservation officer would be the hardest job in the world. But I was surprised when talking with Mike just how much he loves being a CO. It's the best job in the world. Um, it's very rewarding because you get to be out there and see a lot of different people, uh, men and women in the field, kids in the field. Uh, I love being outdoors. You know, I, I would do it for free if I, if I had to. That's how much I love it. But we try to encourage, you know, not just me, but our whole department tries to encourage, you know, to get the youth out there, get the older folks out there, and get everybody involved. Um, you know, it's very fulfilling to be out here and to fish and to hunt, and, and we want them all to, to get out and try it. You know, even if they have special needs, anybody can do it. Well, not only was Alex steering the boat, he was up next to Tangle with another king salmon. Now, the port of Saugatuck, which is just south of Holland, is really a great fishing destination. It has a good fishery. I mean, you got the Kalamazoo dumping in. What was uh, tough right now is the lake rolled again. It finally set up 70 degrees last, last weekend, northwest winds, turned everything over. Fish are a little scattered, so you got to go find them. And with the, what dictated how we fish today was how the wind was blowing. Waves were coming northwest, I don't know, three footers. So we went into them all the way from 140 to 220, and we hit fish all the way out. We were mainly targeting from 60 foot to 100 foot and fish where you could see the marks in between there. There was fish up high, but they weren't going, so just concentrated on the biting fish lower. Hey, you have a kiss? Oh. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Seeing sportsmen working together to get challenged folks outdoors and enjoying some time on the water, well, it's pretty cool. Everybody was having a great time today, and with both Shannon and Alex having some sore arms, everybody got a chance to reel in a fish today. Even I was able to get in front of the camera and catch the last fish of the day. But the cameraman, well, let's just say he needs a little bit of training. Camera, nope, turn. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. The fish on Lake Michigan this year are not quite as plentiful as last year, but they do seem to be a little bit bigger. This was a nice 20 pounder. Nice. Now that, that is a king salmon right there. Wow, nice job, Captain. You found the fish. Hey. <laughs> so with nine fish in the box, we decided to call it a day, and we headed in. I want to say a special thanks to Aaron Sibsma from Lakeshore Outfitters, Captain Tony on the Black Betty, and Dan Wamick from Fulfilling Life Ministries. When sportsmen get together to give back to someone else, well, it makes all sportsmen look good. Now, and maybe there's someone in your life who could use a day on the water. It does have a way of slowing you down and bringing a smile to your face here in Michigan's Out of Doors. 
Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for this week's show, I was tagging along with a couple of guys in search of some good summer pan fishing here in southern Michigan. Today I was fishing with Matt Sherrill and Dan Boucher on Duck Lake in Calhoun County. We were in search of some summer panfish on this beautiful Michigan morning. Now are you actually jigging that like a vertical jig or are you, how are you, what's the presentation? Yeah, a little bit. It's uh, depending on how much weight you have in the, in the hook. You set them, oh right there's one. We're fishing a lot of edges, uh, a lot of corners of weed beds, pockets, the fish will be hiding. It's got a lot of steep drop offs, so the variety of fishing is pretty much endless. It's really clear. Uh, I prefer to fish it with plastics and such. This is our tube jig. It's 1 64th of an ounce. Uh, some of the hooks run up to 3 30 seconds of an ounce. We're going to be tipping them with a wax worm. Some of the fish like it straight on, some of the fish like it curved around the hook. We'll throw it at them both ways and see which one they like. The goal today was panfish, meaning perch, specks, or bluegills. But when tossing a small jig tipped with a wax worm into the depths, you're liable to catch just about anything. Matt did, however, have some tips for trying to locate the right fish. Today we're looking for crappies and the perch. Uh, we're fishing in about 23 foot of water. I like to fish a little bit deeper. It is so clear of a lake that the weeds start at about 25 feet and they'll be anywhere from two to four inches off bottom and they'll grow gradually as the depth comes up. The fish like to hide right on them, right in them or right above them. Uh, they will be suspended, the crappies will be from 25 down to 28 foot and we'll fish them about 23 foot deep and we'll find them from 14 foot to 21 foot of water. We're using they're inch and a half to two inch long tube jigs. Uh, we're using them on four pound test line. I prefer uh, fluorocarbon or the Trilene XL. They've improved that line since last year tremendously. It's got a much higher breaking strength than it used to. So you can fish might much lighter line and not have a problem with breaking the jigs off or losing, losing fish. The, uh, the setup we're using is an eight foot uh, ultralight. They're, uh, they're a new rod by Daiwa that they came out with this year. It's an actual tapered rod that is specifically made for throwing micro jigs. So it helps us cast farther and put it into better positions. We continued to find fish, and although we had to weed through a few smaller ones, it kept us all pretty busy with very little downtime between fish. Even if you're not catching exactly what you're looking for, it's pretty hard to complain when you're pulling up fish after fish. You want to find the weeds and as you find the weeds you'll find edges where the weeds drop off and they end and the deeper water comes in. You look for spots where the deep water transitions into the shallower water and a lot of times you'll find the fish holding anywhere. If it's calm you can see the bait on the top of the water. You usually have some crappies chasing them around along with the bass. Uh, we've caught several bass today. Nothing super big but you know they all they all put up a fight and give a little tug. Uh, this presentation works great anywhere. Uh, your colors will change depending on your water clarity, the conditions for the day. Like today, we've got gray, overcast. 
So we're throwing a little bit brighter colors than what we'd usually use. Even though this lake's clear, I still use a lot of natural colors. Uh, we don't get so much into the oranges like you would if it was muddy. But uh, if your lake's muddy, you know, anything bright will catch fish. Well, as many Michiganders know, you just never know what the weather might do. And a 10% chance of rain was quickly turning into a short day of fishing. We've got some sunny skies in between the clouds. And yesterday, as soon as the sun came out, the fish quit biting. So I kind of got a feeling it's going to be one of those when the sun wants to show itself. Today the fish might bite just because there's so much cloud cover. So all we can hope for is everything blows over and we don't get wet. Mother Nature quickly decided to cut our trip short, but before we got off the water, I asked Matt, who fishes just about everything, what it is he likes so much about pan fishing. It's the pull, just as far as every other fish, they all, they all pull to an extent and there isn't much that can beat a bluegill that's about 10 inches around doing some, uh, some head bobbing in circles as it's coming up to the boat. We did pretty well considering we only got about two hours of fishing in before the rain. And although our trip was cut short, it was well worth the drive for one of the best sunrises I've seen all year here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Many people around the state are familiar with the Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP. But there's another similar program that a lot of hunters forget about, and that's the WRP, or the Wetlands Reserve Program. For our next story, I was able to tag along and learn a little bit more about this program on a piece of property that had just been enrolled. We're out here um, a few miles south of Grand Ledge in uh, Eaton County, and we are on a wetland reserve program project uh, that's being done with private landowners. Um, basically, there's about 650 acres contiguous here that four different landowners have kind of gotten together. Uh, used to be historically sod and vegetable farm on muck soils and uh, they all got together and put their property in the wetland reserve program. Basically it's a program that takes ground that was historically wetland and then was drained uh, through tile or ditches or some means and put into ag production and we turn around and work with the private landowners to restore that wetland, uh, basically try to put it back to the natural community that it once was before it was cleared and drained and put into production. So we try to make it as close to the wetland community that it once was. Over two and a half million acres countrywide are protected by the WRP. This unique program allows outdoorsmen to protect crucial wetland habitat and ensure it's going to stay that way. Turning farm fields back into the wetlands they once were is quite the process. And one of the contractors on hand today, Chad Thalen, was able to walk me through some of the changes you're likely to see when entering this program. We started here a couple weeks ago uh, in mid-July and we started with planting a cover crop out here of rye to help keep the weeds down. Um, we applied some herbicides here this summer and then uh, applied the rye here in the last few days. Um, just shortly after we planted the rye we came in here and started this micro topography that you can see. Um, these are just some shallow push, push outs to help uh, get the ground lumpy and clumpy back to what it was maybe 50-60 years ago before it was uh, drained and leveled for farming. We've also come in and broke tiles with a trencher. Um, this uh, property was tiled pretty uh, intensively. So we've broken the tiles in strategic locations to uh, let the water get back to its uh, normal depth and uh, level. Although getting a property back to what it once was is quite the process, the finished product is well worth it. Yeah, the benefits um, are many. Um, you know, a lot of the landowners that, that we've worked with that put it in, um, they want to put it in for a couple reasons. First reason is, you know, they want to have the land protected. So by us purchasing an easement, um, it's either usually a 30 year or a permanent, which is basically forever easement. Um, they know that the land, once it's restored back to wetland, is going to be protected and it will never become developed or put back into farming or drained. Um, so there's the, one of their big sentimental values is they want to keep the property protected in the wetland once it's restored. Um, but there's also benefits, like you say, for wildlife. I mean, there's habitat now that's going to be created that wasn't here when it was all into row crops or into sod. So there will be different communities that are developed through the tree plantings, uh, through 
meadow plantings, through prairie grass plantings, through different habitat restorations that we're doing in this area. And then, you know, the biggest by far is the water quality improvement. You know, you're taking about 600 acres that's actively drained, you know, and now putting it back into the natural filter, which it once was when it was wetland. So you're allowing that water to get filtered rather than to just run out into the ditch uh, through the drainage system that it was previously. So, you know, there's several benefits there. With natural wetlands dwindling throughout the state and the country every year, it's important that we try our best to keep some around. And if you own property on or near a natural wetland, the WRP may be something you want to look into.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or last week's show, you want to see something again, you can always check us out online at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there. And if you do the Facebook thing, we're on there pretty much every other day or so, letting you know what's going on as we try to bring you a brand new episode of Michigan Out of Doors every week of the year. And we're also on Twitter now as well. You can search for us there at Mood TV. So lots of good ways for you to kind of connect with what we're doing. And uh, if we don't see you on one of those sites throughout the week, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore with its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses. Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Rosie Brothers. Located in Dryden, Michigan, Rosie Brothers has been serving Michigan for over 40 years. Specializing in outdoor needs, Rosie Brothers features Kubota tractors and equipment for use in farm, home, or commercial needs. On the web at rosiebrosinc.com. Buy propane, exceptional energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas energy in homes, farms, and businesses across our great state. Learn more at usemichiganpropane.com. Buy Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. Closed captioning is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas to outdoor enthusiasts across our great state. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love